Coming up on today's show, Ford works with Domino's to deliver pizza using autonomous cars, the BMW i3 gets a mild refresh, and Tesla drops the price on its range topping 100 kilowatt hour versions of the Model S and Model X. These stories and more coming next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is funded by the in-stream ads on today's video and by the kind donations of viewers like you. Follow the link at the end of today's video to make a monthly donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign to help keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, September 1st, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and I've been busy this week setting up some exciting live collaborations for International Drive Electric Week. I'll be sharing more info soon, so make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out. The world of freight haulage might be eagerly awaiting the unveiling of the Tesla Semi later this month, but this week, industrial engine manufacturer Cummins pipped Tesla to the post by unveiling the EOS, an all-electric tractor unit capable of hauling a total of 44,000 pounds, just shy of 20 metric tons, with zero tailpipe emissions. Powering the EOS is a 140 kilowatt hour battery pack with quick charge capabilities, feeding power to a motor mounted under the cab. Range isn't all that exciting, just 100 miles or 160 kilometers, but since it's a concept, a lot could change before production, if indeed any truck maker decides to make the concept a reality. Whenever a new car launches, there are bound to be a few teething problems within the first year or so of production. These can be anything from faulty trim panels to software glitches, incorrectly fitted parts and faulty components. Whatever those teething problems turn out to be, however, they're usually solved through a complimentary service campaign or an official recall. And this week, we heard that certain 2017 model year Chevrolet Bolt EVs are receiving battery pack replacements under warranty after GM identified a problem with around 1% of cars, which could result in them losing power before the car's onboard systems predict they should. Thanks to the wonders of telematics, GM is already reaching out to owners of affected cars directly, so if you haven't heard from GM, the chances are that your Bolt EV is okay. Being a pizza delivery person is not only one of the most thankless jobs out there, but also one of the most popular ways teenagers, university students and new graduates earn some extra income on the side at evenings and weekends. But this week, Ford announced a new partnership with Domino's Pizza to trial an autonomous pizza delivery vehicle in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's all part of a Ford research project examining how people interact with an autonomous delivery vehicle. And while the car will be capable of driving itself, Ford says its engineers will drive manually during pizza delivery, with customers polled on how they'd feel about having a fully autonomous pizza delivery vehicle in the future. Following on from that, Ford announced this week that it wants to develop autonomous delivery trucks too. So if you're looking for a new career, the delivery business may not be a good choice. For the past few months, Elon Musk's boring company has been busying itself digging a test tunnel inside the bounds of the SpaceX lot in Hawthorne, California. Used to prove the concept and refine the firm's drilling technique, the test tunnel has given us a glimpse of what the boring company hopes to achieve in the future. But that's been it, since getting all the necessary permits to drill underground is pretty arduous. Except Maybe it isn't, because this week we learn that the Boring Company has been given the green light by the city of Hawthorne to extend its tunnel to a total of two miles under 120th Street, all the way to Hawthorne Boulevard. The tunnel, which will be dug at a depth of 44 feet, will be far longer than the current 160 feet tunnel in SpaceX's parking lot. I can't wait to see it finished, but I guess we'll have to wait for Godot to get the job done. Ha, uh, ha, uh, anyway. If you've watched this channel for some time, you may be familiar with the Tesloop, the ride-sharing company that's made a name for itself shuttling passengers between cities like San Diego, Los Angeles, and Las Vegas in shiny Tesla Model S electric cars. Driving that kind of distance, of course, results in racking up those miles in pretty short order. And this week, the first Tesloop Model S purchased by the company, nicknamed E-Hawk, hit its 300,000th mile, making it the highest mileage two-year-old Tesla out there. The company says it's keen to up that mileage to 900,000 miles or so in the next six years. And so far, the company has spent just under $10,500 on service and repair bills. So here's to more smooth running, guys.
With the Frankfurt Motor Show just a few weeks away, we're starting to see details posted of all the concept and production vehicles we can expect to see there. And Daimler's smart car brand is no exception, releasing details this week of its self-driving smart concept called the Smart Vision EQ for two. The two-seat EV supposedly previews a day where car sharing rather than car ownership is the norm. And as such, it's replaced all the conventional dials with a massive touchscreen display. It's bright, airy, and reminds me very much of early smart car concepts from more than 20 years ago. But don't expect it to reach production anytime soon, if at all. Smart may be keen to see a two-seat car sharing future, but many buyers outside Europe remain to be convinced of the smart car's appeal, autonomous or not. Bother. One of the most popular features of the Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X, smart air suspension, not only provides a silky smooth ride for passengers, but also helps make it easy to raise up your Model S or Model X to clear rough terrain. It also helps both cars hunker down on the freeway too, improving airflow and increasing efficiency to boot. Well, this week via Twitter, Tesla CEO Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla's smart air suspension would make its way to the Model 3 too, debuting next year alongside the high-performance dual-motor Model 3 variant. It's not clear how much the option will cost, because Tesla hasn't released pricing, but don't expect it to be all that close to the Model 3's headline-grabbing entry-level price. Sorry. What happens to batteries when they're no longer good for use in electric cars? Well, usually, as you might know if you've watched this show before, they end up in second life battery products, providing grid tied backup storage, emergency backup power, and sometimes even off grid power storage for renewable energy solutions. Well, now some clever folks have joined the two worlds together, taking used Renault Zoe ZE battery packs and a rapid charging station and joining them together, helping to make it possible for rapid charging stations to be installed in areas where the power grid was traditionally not powerful enough to take a rapid charging station or where installation of high power feeds would be prohibitively expensive. And what does this all mean? Well, it means we're going to see more remote charging stations, something which can only help make electric cars even more appealing to buyers eager to venture off the beaten track. We've already previewed one concept car this show that we'll see in Frankfurt, and now it's time for another in the form of Mini's all-new electric concept. That, says the automaker, gives us a glimpse of what to expect from its 2019 Mini E production model. With a distinctive hexagonal grille and special lights front and rear, Yes, it does have Union Jack rear light clusters. The concept car has an unspecified battery pack and range, but it's worth noting that Mini seems to have gone to great lengths to make this vehicle as lightweight and as aerodynamic as possible, using the same kind of retractable door handles we're familiar with on the Tesla Model S. Some parts are also 3D printed, hinting that Mini's parent company BMW is still focusing on improving range and performance through lightweight construction, not just shoving larger batteries and more powerful motors inside a car. And for that, I think a well done is in order. Talking of BMW, the German automaker unveiled a tweak or two to the i3 electric car for the 2018 model year, including a new front-end restyle to make the car look and feel wider, thus hopefully attracting more mainstream car buyers, and the addition of a new sport version called the BMW i3 S. The model, which will retail for more than the standard i3, will include wider wheels, an uprated motor, and a 6.9 second sprint time. Sadly, range hasn't been increased, but it's clear that BMW is feeling some pressure from newer cars like the Chevrolet Bolt EV, which is a full six tenths of a second faster than even the new BMW i3 S. When it comes to places and countries of the demand for electric cars, it'd be easy to assume that the US is the largest electric vehicle market, thanks in part to the high number of plug-in cars sold in the state of California. Yet, as newly collated data shows, Chinese car buyers purchased more than double the number of plug-in cars between January and June this year when compared to the US. Moreover, unlike the US, where the majority of plug-in cars sold this year still had an internal combustion engine, for range extending capabilities, the majority of new plug-in cars sold in China this year have been pure electric. And don't think it's all Tesla either. Non-Chinese brands accounts for just 6% of all new plug-in cars sold in China this year. So the next time you think about who's leading the plug-in push, don't look west, look east instead. Unlike most automakers, who tend to keep their vehicle refresh cycles extremely strict, changing pricing or content only at defined model year switchover points, Tesla has always favoured making changes to its vehicle lineups as and when they're ready. 
which is why this week it's dropped the price of its flagship Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X vehicles after making some tweaks to the way in which its 100 kilowatt hour battery packs are made. The pack, Tesla's most energy dense to date, had been causing some headaches for the company, resulting in a higher price tag for customers. But now it appears Tesla has smoothed out its production process and the result is a few thousand dollars off all of the top end models. But they are still six figures though. Sorry. And finally, with more and more automakers bringing semi-autonomous vehicle technology to market, you'd be forgiven for thinking that society has started to make peace with the idea that cars will, very soon, be doing the majority of the driving duties for us. Not so, says Jack Wiest, senior principal engineer and systems architect for Intel's autonomous vehicle program. Having carried out extensive research, his department has concluded that people are generally still terrified of robotic cars and really don't trust them at all that much. The solution, it turns out, as Nissan and other teams have discovered, is to make the experience of being in an autonomous car as pleasant as possible, using vocal and visual interaction techniques to keep passengers reassured and calm. And until engineers have ironed out all the kinks in those so-called human-machine interfaces, autonomous cars will remain untrusted. So no Johnny Cab for you just yet, okay? And on that futuristic note, it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell to make sure that you don't miss an episode. And if you like what I'm doing here, why not contribute to the show's costs via Patreon? I've left a link below and a clickable one at the end of this video. Normally at this point, I'll say I'll be back next week with another 10, but the truth is that I'm heading off for a top secret mission. So I'm not gonna be around to film this show here. I will, however, be giving you plenty of vlogs from the road, so make sure you tune in and keep up to date with what I'm up to. Until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, this was 10. Have a great weekend, and until next time, keep evolving.